everyone. Today I'm going to talk about something that has nothing to do with heart disease, but I think uh, should be of interest to you, especially if you exercise uh, on a regular basis at an, at an intense level or, or if you're an athlete. And the topic is water intoxication. I bring that up because a few days ago, a young man came to Athletic Heart of San Francisco. He had had really bad symptoms during a workout and there was some concern that it might be his heart. What it turned out, his heart was fine and we figured out that the most likely cause of his symptoms was water intoxication. So what is water intoxication? Why and how does it happen to athletes? What are the symptoms? And what can we do to prevent it? These are the questions that I will address now. So water intoxication occurs when you drink so much water and you drink it so fast that you overwhelm the ability of your kidneys to get rid of the excess water. As a result, your blood becomes dilute and this is called hyponatremia, which refers to the fact that the concentration of sodium in the blood starts to fall. In fact, the technical term for water intoxication in the setting of exercise is, is exercise-associated hyponatremia. But for the rest of this uh, little talk, I will just use the term water intoxication. So the reason this is a problem is because the dilution of the blood affects the movement of water in and out of the cells of the body. Normally, the blood concentration must be kept between 135 and 145 because at that level, the blood and body fluids are isotonic with the cells of the body. If you get dehydrated, the concentration of sodium rises above 145 and the cells of the body start to shrink because water moves out of the cell under osmotic pressure into the bloodstream. On the other hand, if the so sodium concentration drops much below 135 because you have been drinking too much water, then the cells of the body can swell as shown here because water will move from the bloodstream into the cells due to osmotic pressure. And we maintain our sodium concentration between 135 and 145 primarily through our sense of thirst, which tells us when we need to drink and when we've had enough to drink, and also a system of hormones that act on the kidneys to tell the kidneys to either hang on to more water or to get rid of excess water depending on the situation. And that system of thirst and hormones and kidneys is really quite robust so that water intoxication only occurs under very extreme circumstances. Nevertheless, it can occur, and it can occur in particular to athletes and people who do intense exercise activities. So part of the reason water intoxication is associated with exercise is because over the last few years, we've been encouraged, and some would say over-encouraged, to drink water to avoid dehydration. Um, as a result, some people may get the advice to drink a lot of water before starting the exercise, and that's probably not very good advice. And also, there's plenty of water available um, you know, during marathons and races uh, like that, which is very good to avoid dehydration. But on, on the other hand, it may be a temptation to drink, drink mechanically without thinking about it. Some people also may believe that drinking will prevent or treat muscle cramps, so that they may drink more than they need to on that basis. It's important to know that there's no good evidence that cramps can be avoided or treated by drinking water, even water containing electrolytes uh, like Gatorade and other sports drinks. And as a matter of fact, it's important to know that Gatorade and the sports drinks are really, uh, even though they contain sodium, they're really quite dilute. And so you can get water intoxication from drinking these fluids as well as water. So the symptoms of water intoxication occur because, as I mentioned earlier, the cells of the body start to swell if, you get, uh, if your uh, blood sodium becomes too low and your blood is too dilute. And, they, uh, and the cells that can get to swell in particular are the cells in the brain. And as a result, the first symptoms of water intoxication are dizziness or lightheadedness and nausea. And that, that occurs at first. And the problem is that these symptoms are not very specific. They can be symptoms of other things like heart disease. And as a matter of fact, they can also be symptoms of dehydration because they, when people get dehydrated, they can also feel lightheaded and, and a little bit nauseated. So some people may confuse the symptoms of water intoxication for dehydration and drink more. And as a result, that will only make the, of course, you know, it will make the, the problems worse. So as things get more severe, uh, you start getting confused and, and the lightheadedness becomes more severe. You may vomit, so vomiting is a, uh, a symptom of severe water intoxication, and eventually it can lead to collapse and even death. I mean, it's unfortunate, but there have been several cases of fatalities um, during athletic events uh, related to 
very severe wa water intoxication. And that's really a shame because it's completely avoidable and it uh, occurs in people who are otherwise completely healthy. So the settings in which water intoxication is most commonly described are uh, long endurance uh, events, marathons, ultramarathons, triathlons, rowing, but even hiking, military exercises, police training, and that sort of thing. So long events lasting more than four hours and uh, during which one might be tempted to, um, to drink more. And especially if there's fatigue involved, because when, when you're fatigued and then you become a little more confused and you lose track of how much you're drinking and you may start to drink mechanically. But in truth, water intoxication can, can occur you know, even without exercise. If you just sat there and started drinking gallons and gallons of water, you could get into, uh, into water intoxication. So it does not have to be just with uh, long endurance sports. So the main approach to prevention of water intoxication is to be mindful of how much you drink, but the most important thing is to really obey your sense of thirst. You know, our sense of thirst is a very reliable guide for our water intake. And if we're thirsty, we should drink. And if we're not thirsty, chances are we are not getting dehydrated and we don't need to drink anymore. Um, another important thing to do is if you start feeling symptoms of, uh, um, that might be due to water intoxication, like lightheadedness and nausea, the best thing to do if you're in the middle of a workout or in the middle of a, of a race or an event is to stop and then collect yourself. Um, in the middle of an event or in the middle of exercise, we tend to be confused and, and we can't really think straight unless we stop and collect our, our thoughts and then reflect, you know, are you thirsty or am I thirsty, am I not? If you're thirsty, you know, you should go ahead and drink. But if you're not thirsty, chances are your symptoms are not due to water intoxication. And if things don't get better and, and progress and, and, and get more severe, then really the best thing to do is to seek medical assistance. So in summary, water intoxication is a rare but potentially serious and uh, even fatal complication that can confront athletes. The main cause is from drinking too much water, um, irrespective of thirst. The early symptoms are lightheadedness and nausea, but if these are ignored, then water intoxication can progress to cause confusion, collapse, and even death. The main prevention is to drink as guided by thirst and common sense. I hope you have found this video useful. As always, the, uh, the transcripts will be available on the website of athleticartsf.com. And if you have any question you would like me to address on a, in a future episode, please feel free to drop me a note. Until then, enjoy your workout and be well. Thank you.